Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Sean and today I am so happy, so excited to give you an update on the Tiffany A. Henyer saga, the super mayor, the mayor of the village of Dalton, the head of the Thornton Township Board of Trustees, because recently they had one of their regularly scheduled board meetings and this was anything but regular. It was absolutely insane from top to bottom. She was responding to the previous emergency board meeting where they voted to investigate her for all of of her crimes for all of her corruption and in this meeting she decided that she was going to drag out a bunch of people that she appointed to be her puppets to praise her throughout the whole course of the thing like a dictator in North Korea style and it's absolutely wonderful from top to bottom but before we get into that I want to thank everybody who signed up over at actualjusticewarrior.com slash join I will give me the money give you give me the money Okay. And thank you to the podcast listeners, Spotify, Apple, and Google's podcasting platform. So I have an entire playlist on the corrupt super mayor. It will be linked in full in the description if you want to catch up, because there is no way I can continually give you new information while recapping all the other previous scandals without making these videos an hour to two hours long a piece. But anyway, where we are right now is that the FBI has launched an investigation allegedly against the super mayor. We also have the state attorney general for Illinois investigating her for setting up a fraudulent charity. All of these bills that she has not been paying throughout the whole course of her tenure have come due. And by the way, we actually covered some of the invoices for things that they weren't paying in my previous video where I was able to obtain exclusive documents that she has been withholding from the public, which shows that they're on the verge of getting their stoplights, their streetlights, their police vehicles, and all manner of other things being repossessed. So definitely go check out that video if you want to see those exclusive documents. Now, they have a board meeting. It's after they voted overwhelmingly to investigate this woman. And the first thing that I noticed about this is that they started off with public comment and the public is not too happy with the corrupt super mayor. My story through fault and with the pain and struggle is a testament of resilience and unwavering determination to fight for what is right and let us stand united in the pursuit of justice ensuring that our voices are heard and the struggles are acknowledged. And thank you for standing by me in this journey together. We will reclaim our city and pave the way for a brighter, more incredible future. Tiffany, you do not, you do not stand for my kid and you do not stand for me. I helped you in this fight. You lied. You lied to us as residents. You do not, you do not stand for me. And I want you to step down as mayor today and save our village from this deficit that you have called because something is definitely wrong with you. And that mental illness bill that you want to pass, you need to get yourself checked. So this was wild from the jump, and unfortunately, most of this woman's particular speech that she gave was cut off because the audio wasn't running, so I guess it was one of those situations where you had to be there, but this really got crazy from the next speaker on, where he immediately started calling out the personal bankruptcy of Tiffany A. Hanyard's right-hand man, the village administrator, who also holds a position in Thornton Township. My name is Reed Harvey. I'm a longtime resident since 1986. My question is, what was the financial status when Tiffany Henyard was elected? What has your administration done or accomplished to better that? Are you aware that the village administrator currently is in a bankruptcy proceeding because if you can't manage your own personal finances how are you going to manage an entire village's finances was his point but also he pointed out that this individual lied on his bankruptcy form not even disclosing his two different jobs and by the way this is public information people have made videos about this aspect of the story something like this does not happen overnight first timothy 5 8 says but if any provide not for his own his own is what he has authority, influence over, which is as the village administrator, and especially for those of his own house. He hath denied the faith because he calls himself a man of God and is worse than an infidel. 
worse than an infidel. So it's 100% true, and considering these are the first couple of people to step up to Tiffany A. Henyard, you could tell that this meeting was going to get chaotic almost immediately. I want to start off by saying self-accountability is a bad thing in this administration. The mayor can blame everybody for what's going on, but she has to look at herself. Nobody told her to get on TV and lie like that. Blatant lies. Did you spend this on a credit card? No, sir. I don't know where they got that from. You, that's, that's unexcusable. These are easily verifiable lies. That's unacceptable. That immediate attention didn't get kicked up until them lies came out on WGN. So this guy bring the fire from the jump. And by the way, the residents of Dalton are quite angry. And you could tell about the Roland Martin interview. And I know Roland Martin is arguing that he was playing four-dimensional chess. And he was smarter than all of us. And we just don't understand how much journalism that Roland Martin does. But this complete and utter buffoon, this doofus, as covered in my previous video, was actually convinced by Tiffany A. Hanyard that the Tiffany A. Hanyard Foundation, which by the way, she used her position at Thornton Township to appropriate money to, had nothing to do with Tiffany A. Hanyard. So no, it was not four-dimensional chess. Roland Martin is an idiot, but this guy knows his facts, he knows his details, and he's actually referencing a bunch of other stuff that we've talked about that I want to play for you, because yes, Tiffany A. Hanyard was blatantly lying in that interview, and it was ridiculous and absurd. I do not handle anything as it relates to with credit cards. As you heard me speak today in my board meeting about, I do not handle that. Some of those charges are for you, though. No, sir. You didn't go to Las Vegas? Mmm... What is that? No comment. You don't know if you were in Las Vegas? Of course I do. Were you? It's not paid by them. Did you fly first class to Las Vegas? Any other questions? So yeah, one of Henyard's tricks that she often utilizes is to say, look, my name's not on anything. I didn't sign anything. I'm not responsible. That's the responsibility of the county clerk. And again, this is a woman who will lock out the county clerk for not complying and not paying for her lavish expenses. But her lies and her brazenness goes even further than that, because in that same interview, she lied about her salary, which is a matter of public record. You make almost $300,000 between your two elected I positions. Do I do not. I don't know where you got that number from. We got it from her own village and township records. So this guy right here knows exactly what he's talking about. He is prepared for this, and there is no response from the super mayor to this that is going to be anything adequate addressing the situation. Also, the financial reports. Who's the finance chair? Stan Brown. Does, does Stan know anything about the finances? Can he answer any questions? They, the, the trustees don't have the credit card receipts, the mayor's re village reports, the financial reports, the stand have it because the rest of the trustees don't have it. And she's going to say everybody's lying. They do have it. The attorney general is asking for credit card receipts. I guess the attorney general is lying too. So this is where we're at in the village. It's self-accountability and it's, you can, the mayor can blame everybody. Seriously, I love this guy. He brought so much fire from the jump and he's right about all this. Tiffany A. Hanyard will often call everybody a liar. She'll say everybody has the records. She emails them. They just refuse to check their emails because they're so lazy and honestly she's not on any credit cards. So don't ask any questions about the absurd level of expenses that she's charging to the Dalton taxpayers, which by the way includes lavish vacations, calendars, billboards, that that are obviously campaign material that are supporting her and all manner of other things that between her two positions as the mayor of Dalton and as a person on the board of the Thornton Township Board of Supervisors. I know she wants to say I'm a black woman and it's because I'm a woman. You know how many women that she's affecting? Look at what she did to Dr. Scott down the street. She won't even let her open up. Again, this guy just bringing the fire, referencing Tiffany A. Hanyard's latest defense from the previous meeting where she said, listen, I'm a black person, I'm a black woman, and you people are betraying your blackness by going after me. And if you don't remember, that clip was far more dramatic than my portrayal of it. So let me roll it for you before we get back to this guy. Because y'all got false narratives out there and y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. All the stuff that y'all did to get people to come to our community, to just diss and down our community. Shame on y'all. Yeah, so he's dead on accurate to call that out. Make no mistake about it. And I have all the clips to prove it to you. Look how she talks to the other black women up here. 
These are all single mothers, just like her. Look how she talks to them. Look how she talks to the clerk who's old enough to be her mother. Look how disrespectful she is. If y'all can't see that, a lot of y'all do see that. I just don't refuse to see it. She's so disrespectful. And she told Brittany, don't say nothing else. I don't want to hear from you no more. How do you talk to an adult like that who's elected? Everybody that works for her know how disrespectful she is. Again, he's dead on accurate right here. Tiffany Hanyard shows no respect to anybody at all whatsoever. She yells at them. She tries to humiliate them. Remember Valerie Stubbs, the woman who was a former board of trustees member for the village of Dalton. Remember, she was somebody who was speaking out against Tiffany Hanyard. And not only is there allegations that Tiffany Hanyard might have ordered a shooting on Stubbs's property. And yes, we have video of that particular shooting. But then Henyard insanely decided that she was going to go to this woman's home, to her property, and issue a veiled threat about how she should talk uh, less about Tiffany and Hanyard and stop being a hater because she helps everybody and weirdly and insanely was shoveling out this woman's property personally. Hey guys, we're Mayor Tiffany Henyard, and this is what it looks like when you pull up on your haters. Yeah, let me show you around about the do. See this? Everyone needs help. Just remember that. I try you treat people because you never know when you need the help, okay? But guess what? I am there for all my haters. It doesn't matter because I'm the mayor of all of Dalton. The good, the bad, the ugly, and even the hateful. I am your mayor. So, here we go. Let's go. Got my crew. See this? Look, we're going to go and help. We're coming down the alley. Yes, Lord. This is what we do. I thank you all for all your support, all your love, commitment. And I am here to shovel people out. As always, we have. <laughs> Hello. No problem. I'm like, oh, you call me? Oh, no. So we have. Va we, hey, same to you. We have Valerie Stubbs. Look. And I'm helping her get out of her garage. So she needs help to get out of her alley. So, see? See, I mean, see, I'm here. I'm here to help you no matter what and how you treat me. I'm still here. While doing an Instagram live. So department heads, be careful. Like Chief lied last time and got caught up. The, 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 the calls were about to get repo. Oh, that's handled, trusty house. When it clearly wasn't handled. So when you be careful, there's life after this girl. And you have to move on. And if you're on camera lying for her because she told you to lie, beginning me, it's all recorded. Everything's recorded. And be careful not to lie on something that can easily be proven that you lied. The chief said it was handled. It wasn't handled. They almost repossessed the cars. Now, he also calls out the police chief. And again, we covered this video before. Essentially, Tiffany A. Hanyard fired the police chief that was opposed to her, installed her puppet, a complete and utter buffoon, who we will show clips of later. And she has been overpaying her police force ridiculous amounts of overtime while simultaneously not making payments on their police cars. In yet another shock to Village of Dalton trustees, a letter falling on their desks dated February 14th. Representatives from Kansas State Bank threatening to repossess 13 village vehicles saying more than $76,000 is overdue and climbing. The Board of Trustees approved payment in May of 2023. But where that loan payment went that was due nine months ago is anyone's guess. Lawyers for the bank now warning the village pay up or be ready for repossession agents to take the vehicles, which include six police cruisers. Now, this resulted in a humiliating situation where the creditor actually had to contact them and tell them that their vehicles were on the cusp of being repossessed. But the police chief pretended like that was not a thing and you weren't supposed to worry about that, even though, again, 13 vehicles from the village of Dalton were on the cusp of being repossessed including six police vehicles and again nobody was checking for this until the mayor got on tv and lied right through the camera smooth without a bite in the eye that is dangerous when you can lie like that and that easily a stuff that you know can be verified is true so thank y'all so much trustees keep fighting keep holding this administration accountable keep fighting for transparency and keep don't let her bankrupt this town and then blame it on y'all
And trusty Belcher. Time is up, sir. Please put our picture back Time up. Time is up, sir. Now, finally, this guy who, again, hit all the notes right there, points out that this thing that had been weirding me out every time I watched the Village of Dalton YouTube page and these meetings, which was this woman right here holding a big photo of herself on her desk, and he says that she needs to have her photo back up there because apparently Tiffany A. Hanyard, mad at her, decided to take this photo down, so she shows up as a former protests ever since then with this photo that is supposed to be up with the other trustees but tiffany a henyard decided that she wanted to humiliate her now i find this to be unbelievably amazing because again that rant that i played earlier for you is all about how tiffany a henyard is a black woman and in power and you shouldn't disrespect her because she's a black woman and in power but this is the way she treats black women with positions of power. She goes out of her way to humiliate those people. Um, I usually address most of my uh, comments to the audience, but I'm gonna talk to Tiffany Henyard and Keith Freeman. Keep my name out of your mouth, okay? Now, unless you want it back, because you will get it back. I'm just letting you know face to face, I'm not going behind your back. I'm telling to your face, please, we're not on a first name basis. Let's not pretend anymore, okay? If we got that, I hope, I hope you got that. Uh, next, I couldn't believe I looked at this agenda and saw the word secret squirrel on a freaking, uh, on, on, a, on a professional agenda for a village. Now, this meeting is actually even more ridiculous than you can possibly imagine. And the reason I let that guy mention the secret squirrel thing is because that is what Tiffany A. Hanyard calls the emergency meeting that they had to discuss whether or not they wanted to investigate her. So with that being said, I'm going to go into this veto message. The veto message um, is related to the secret score means yes, that the board of trustee have, and that's a meeting that's a violation of the open meeting act. You cannot have a quorum without um, actually coming here. Your meetings are set here for Village Hall, but yet y'all go everywhere else to have this meeting and to talk about Village business. The board of trustees, and I repeat, do not run the Village of Dalton. It's up to myself, the village administrator, and our administration. That's who run the day to day. That's who run the day to day in any other uh, municipality. But people don't got the facts, so they don't know what to believe. The one that I showed you clips from in a previous video, she calls it a secret squirrel meeting and says it's illegal because you're not supposed to have public meetings anywhere but the village of Dalton. And all of her minions that speak throughout the course of this particular meeting that suck up to her in the most insane ways, North Korea style, also mention this. But I just want to point out that the reason they didn't have that emergency meeting where they were supposed to have it is because Tiffany A. Henyard locked them out. She won't give them the key, so they don't have access to their own city council chamber where they would do these meetings. Where this meeting is taking place right now, only officials connected with Tiffany A. Henyard have it, and again, she's abused that power in the past to lock these people out. If you look on that first page, she has secret scroll meeting on there. You know what made that necessary? Eleven council meetings there have been 11 meetings like this that have been canceled now she's so petty she actually put the top item of the actual agenda for this meeting the secret squirrel meeting that she says is illegal throughout the whole course of this thing you just listen to one side once again and then get both other sides to know what's true and what's not so i'm gonna read this into order just so you know and um yeah i know me have videos and today I might have to, but um, anybody want to see anything that's going on with myself, anything that's going on with the truth, with the facts, with the receipts, I will be posting on Tiffany here you're on the move podcast. You can go to Spotify, uh, Amazon, you go to any of those platforms to see uh, what is going on. And I will drop the first one this Friday. So stay tuned because I know everybody asking and been texting me about it. So I just want to put that out there so you know it is coming so that our board means can be our board means and we don't have to go back and forth and we can actually get through the business and then we can actually go home to our loved ones and then take care of the real business because when when they sleep i'm still working no matter what when y'all leave we still gonna work and it's gonna be just another story in another day now that clip is 100 percent real the super mayor decided that she was going to lead off her commentary by of course saying look the media is biased against her everybody's haters they just tell one side of the story they just lie at one point in time she calls out youtubers for using her as clickbait and then to those people that don't understand how so social media work. I am considered a uh, clickbait. Clickbait is when a person go and they make a narrative, a story or something like that. And basically they put out different news, fake ne negative 
you name it. And basically, people click it because it says Tiffany Hendrix. They make money off of clicks. I don't know if y'all know how that goes, but that's how this game goes. So that's another thing of why things are moving so rapidly because it's now a social media type of market when before it was like newspapers or you have to live in that community in order to know what was going on. So um, that's the facts to what's going on, and I'm going to leave it there. I wonder who that could be a reference to. And then she says that you can hear her side of the story on the exclusive Tiffany A. Hanyard podcast, something we talked about, like and subscribe on all the social media platforms. And no, I'm not kidding. Those are things she actually said. Stay tuned again, Tiffany Hanyard on the Mood podcast. You can check that out. It will be all facts, receipts, things you can utilize. You can repost because I know y'all like to repost things. The mayor of Dalton, who's accused of spending all the village resources in inappropriate ways, who's accused of excessive, insane, asinine, taxpayer-funded self-promotion is self-promoting her stupid podcast, launching the first episode Friday at the end of this week in the beginning of this meeting. That's the first thing that she went to. And to give you an idea of what is normally supposed to go on, they're supposed to take reports from the heads of government departments on what they've been doing over the past month. And they're supposed to review statements in order to pay bills. So this is what Tiffany A. Hanyard does in a meeting like that. You can check that out. It will be all facts, receipts, things you can utilize. You can repost because I know y'all like to repost things. Now, I love the fact that Tiffany A. Hanyard says throughout this that it's facts over fiction and she will show receipts. Because when we get to the point where they ask her for receipts, she's not showing any of it at all. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you to the residents of Dalton for keeping me in your prayers. Thank you for loving on me, sending me uplifting messages. I do need that. As you can see, our village, our community, uh, myself, we are under attack. It's a shame that people can come to meetings and just tell one-sided stories and not get the entire side of both stories. Um, in the next week or two, you will hear myself speak to anything anyone has spoken about me, anything anyone has put out there, because it's facts over fiction for me. So I will state facts, I will show receipts, and I will make sure that our community is um, back together as one, because there's always one band, one sound. And I don't want people to get away from loving on each other, because there's so much hatred in the world that it amazes me how people can get together and come to a board meeting and just have hate in their heart and not love on each other, try to uplift one another. Yeah, there's too much hate in your hearts, and you're not loving on each other. And people come to these meetings with hate in their hearts, and that's what Tiffany A. Hanyard is really upset about. Again. This is the head of the executive branch in the village of Dalton. And I know people are going to say they voted for this. Yes, it is in fact true. But they also had a recall election. It was tossed out after the fact by the courts. But in that recall election, they overwhelmingly voted this woman out. So they don't want her there. They're against her. There's a reason why so many people have turned against her and they come to these meetings to open them up by screaming at her. Um, I want to speak to Women's History Month. This month is Women's History Month, and I want to uplift women uh, throughout the state of Illinois uh, to keep pushing because I know I'm going through what I'm going through, but it's a lot of women that's like me that's going through mess where people think they could come in and strong arm them and tell them what to do and don't think that they're not going to fight back. So I want them to know to keep going. Don't give up. Never, never, never give up. And keep pushing no matter what you do. And this is to my women because I know how hard it is. It is a boys club. And unfortunately, they don't want us leading like we're doing now. I have two big, powerful seats. And everybody thought they was going to be able to come and tell me what to do. They thought they was going to start this little smear campaign. And I want to go fight back. I'm going to always fight for what's right. And I'm always stay the course. And I will be victorious when all the dust clear. You see, mark my word. Now, like last month where Tiffany... Tiffany A. Hanyard played the race and gender card. This month, she decided to lead off with her playing the woman card. It's Women's History Month. It's a boys club. They just trying to shut down the voices of women. But again, if you look at the board of supervisors for the village of Dalton, the people that she's fighting with, the majority of them are women. They happen to be black women as well. They also happen to be single mothers and all that. But again, it's about the boys just trying to freeze her out and whatnot. But of course, the real issue is that Tiffany A. Henyard has been lying about all this stuff. She's insanely corrupt. And she's about to get busted up throughout the course of this in multiple different ways. But one of the earliest ways has to do with her North Korea-style reporting from her underlings. Um, so I, there are some things that I would like to touch on madam mayor if i can um 
So that way, everybody has a clear understanding when it comes down to these nightclubs and what actually was going on with the nightclubs. So this is the police chief of the village of Dalton. And you guys know, based on my previous coverage, that this is a puppet of Tiffany A. Hanyard. This is somebody that she installed when the other guy was pushing back against her. And by the way, this is the same department that she uses as her own personal detail. She has them being paid hours upon hours of excess overtime, sometimes even getting up to 303 hours over a two-week period. The officers are paid every two weeks, which without overtime is 80 hours. But when they're put on Henyard's detail, that 80 hours balloons to well over 100 hours, sometimes 200 hours. And in the case of Officer Terry Young last May, 303 hours worked over a two-week period. That resulted in a single paycheck of more than $13,000. How? How does a person put in a two-week pay period, 303 hours? That's impossible. That's there's, impossible. There's 336 hours. Does he hours never go to sleep? In fact, there are 336 hours total in two weeks. Which is impossible, ridiculous, and absurd, but you need to understand that context because he starts off giving his regular, ordinary report that you would do as the police chief that you would expect in one of these meetings, but then he goes into his North Korea-style worship of Tiffany A. Henyard, and it's absolutely crazy. I'm glad that the owner of Ricky's is still here because in my hand, I have all the calls that the Dalton Police Department responded to, also where we had to call outside agencies, where there were major fights, shootings, and, and guess what, people, well, let me, okay, I understand, major fights, shootings, and incidents at your, at your location. You don't have to believe me, you can, you can FOIA it, to where there's also body cam footage, okay? So, in short, the mayor had nothing to do with closing down the club. It was the housing department, the police department, to where we enforced it because of the violations to where you did not have your license. So yes, your business was closed down for the activity that was going on in your club. So we covered on this channel before that Tiffany A. Hanyard appears to be, according to the allegations, soliciting donations from businesses in the village of Dalton. And when they don't comply, she doesn't renew their licenses, she shakes them down, and she uses the police department to do so. And in fact, businesses that reportedly had owners that spoke to the FBI were raided just hours after it was announced that the FBI was interviewing people for a possible investigation against Tiffany A. Henyard. He's actually talking about one of those businesses right now, a nightclub, who, by the way, the owner actually came during the comment period. Again, full meeting linked in the description if you want to check this out. And he's saying that the reason why that they were shut down had nothing to do with the mayor, had nothing to do with revenge or anything like that. It was due to the many numerous fights that broke out at this particular location. And the reason I find this to be incredibly interesting, and I'm highlighting it right now before he goes into his suck-off section of of the super mayor is because we're actually going to hear multiple explanations for why it was shut down because even these sycophants of the super mayor aren't smart enough to keep their story straight when it comes down to the repossessed cars since ed stevens i don't know if you're still here a uh, trusty house uh when that happened and i brought that up that everything was fine what wasn't brought up was the mayor wasn't on the bank account it was an automatic deduction once a year. I have no idea who makes an arrangement for an automatic deduction for a car payment once a year, but it was done before the mayor's tenure. <laughs> and what ended up happening when the mayor was taken off the bank account, they conveniently took off the payment for the car. Now, you don't have to believe me. Okay, you can Google this, you can FOIA it, and guess what? It'll prove exactly what I'm saying, but that's okay. You can actually hear while this guy is talking, Tiffany A. Henyard laughing in the background. She's actually giving jeers, going like, yes, and all that in support of the people that are giving the propaganda on her behalf. But I just want you guys to know that what he's saying right now is completely and utterly untrue. Tiffany A. Henyard was not taken off the account. This is actually proven out later in this meeting that it's totally made up. And it's interesting that they're making the case that the village of Dalton trustees ended up doing this to her. Yet, while 13 different vehicle payments for the village of Dalton were in fact missed, and by the way, the creditor actually said that Henyard was not removed from this account and the people that they were saying are behind it did not stop payment. Tiffany A. Henyard's Tahoe, that Tahoe that she paid over $55,000 extra for in order to lease it, 
got every payment made. So her detail is covered. It's just the vehicles in the village of Dalton that aren't covered. But remember, this is the police chief lying to the public. He's going to get caught later throughout the course of these events on live television for the world to see because he is the puppet of the super mayor. So when it's said that the cars were being repossessed, the cars were nowhere near being repossessed. <laughs> They're not in a repossessed business. They're in any car dealer is in the getting paid business. That's what they want. They want their money. But since we didn't know about what had happened, since we were not informed what had happened, trustee house, then what ended up happening was, guess what? That letter came out with your name on it and clerk keys name on it. <laughs> when we were made aware of it, it was immediately taken care of. So the Dalton police department was never in jeopardy of their cars being repossessed. And again, you don't have to believe me. You can FOIA it. So if you're gonna if you're gonna do something, say it right. Say the facts. Mm -hmm. But that's okay too. Look, I know that corrupt politicians like Tiffany A. Hanyard put the dumbest people in charge because they're easier to control. But imagine being this dumb, this stupid, this ignorant of a person. He says, "Look, creditors are not in the business of repossessions. They're in the business of being paid." Yeah, that's true. They they want to be paid for what they loan you. But the thing is. You didn't make payments for seven months. That's why they sent you a final notice. We can all see the notice. In yet another shock to Village of Dalton trustees, a letter falling on their desks dated February 14th. Representatives from Kansas State Bank threatening to repossess 13 village vehicles, saying more than $76,000 is overdue and climbing. The Board of Trustees approved payment in May of 2023. But where that loan payment went that was due nine months ago is anyone's guess. Lawyers for the bank now warning the village, pay up or be ready for repossession agents to take the vehicles, which include six police cruisers. That they were going to repossess the vehicle. So the idea that this was not true, the idea that he would double down on this, even after he was called out by one of the individuals from the community for telling this same lie the previous month, is ridiculous, absurd, and insane. Now, you don't have to believe me, okay? You can Google this. You can play it, and guess what? It'll prove exactly what I'm saying, but that's okay. Now, I also want to point out that this complete and utter idiot says you can Google whose name is on these accounts. You can FOIA it, and obviously you can't Google it. The guy's just making up nonsense right here. But the reason you can't get it through Freedom of Information Act requests is because Tiffany A. Henyard has been blocking Freedom of Information Act requests since September of last year. In fact, that's one of the things that the Attorney General is demanding be produced by the Superman. Mayor. And that's that's one of the reasons why I'm glad that I am where I am, because guess what? They can get the service that they need and the backup that they need that this administration is giving you, because guess what? Right now, what's going on is politics. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Right here, we have the police chief saying, oh, the trustees are all playing politics and it's an honor to serve under Tiffany A. Henyard, the super mayor. And this is a completely bought and paid for individual right here who is embarrassing himself in order to protect his dear leader. All right. Thank you. Next is housing, building apartments. William Moore. Now, next up is the housing guy. And of course, Tiffany A. Henyard has to say housing. They build in apartments and whatnot. And the way that this guy starts off really starts the insanity of this particular segment because these people are puppets of Tiffany A. Henyard. Make no mistake about it. They are put into place by the super mayor. They work in concert with her and they work against the Dalton trustees. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening to our board, to our uh, directors and our managers and to our uh, citizens that are here. Um, Madam, if I could, um, I know we said that um, you know, we're kind of cronies for you. It is an absolutely honor to work on your leadership with your, with your passion and your compassion for the people. We work tirelessly. Um, so I just appreciate you with the vision, um, that you have for the housing and the business licensing department. What people don't know when we came in, you never mentioned once that the administration prior was in shambles. What you said to me was fix it get it done. So I appreciate you not making any excuses. 
We're going to continue to work. So here we have the housing guy right here. And he's like, it's such an honor to work for you, Super Mayor. You know, you don't talk about this because you would never, ever blame anybody else. Except for the fact that she constantly blames everybody else for all of her problems. But this department was in complete and utter shambles until you came in. And you told me, go fix it. And I just admire your spirit and your beauty and all that. Like, this isn't the most weird thing we've ever seen right now. And of course, these people are paying homage to... To their dictator to their queen and it's absolute madness again in a democratically supposedly democratically elected government we work tirelessly to service you we have our team briefs every week and we tell our team we are here to service our residents we will not get caught up in the political fight but we're here to service you because you as a resident deserve better so Bear, i appreciate you uh, with your vision your leadership and your passion your compassion we're going to have the vision and the voice in the room is going to be louder than the voices outside. So thank you. So I'll be giving my house report and my permits report for the month of February. Yeah, so that is the setup, the prelude to this guy giving his report to the thing that he's actually supposed to say. That's how embarrassing this meeting was with all of her puppets, who, by the way, Tiffany A. Henyard gets really upset if you call these people her puppets. It really bothers her, even though that's clearly what we're seeing right here. The idea that we're not watching somebody kiss the ass that feeds him live on YouTube is crazy and insane. So the trustees, like, I don't know what money was taken from my budget. But animal control is very much needed here in the village. Mm -hmm. And we're working with a skeleton crew, and, and the people need to be trained for that, and there's no money for that. And it's so unfortunate that the residents of Dalton will suffer because we got a lot of stray dogs just running around <laughs> and we have nobody to get them. So this is the head of code enforcement, which also covers animal control. And I know it's going to seem weird that I'm showing somebody complaining about her budget for animal control being cut. But the reason that she's in is a throughout the whole course of her talking, you can hear Tiffany A. Hainer say, yeah, go speak and all these other cringe things. But B, she's about to fumble this by trying to go too hard and praise Hanyard and say something completely different to what the police chief told us on why these businesses are going to get shut down or have been shut down or have been denied licenses. <laughs> we really do. And it's sad. Also, I just wanted to say that, uh, Madam Mayor, sometimes the best man for a job is a woman. Mm -hmm. Keep your head up. You know, it, it, it saddens me that I have to sit here and we can't work together for the greater good of the community. Let's just get something done for the people. Okay, you don't like the mayor. You don't like what she did. Y'all say the feds are coming. Let the feds do their job. <laughs> Let the feds do their job. Now, once the feds come and they don't find anything, are you guys going to be willing to apologize to this lady? Because everybody know the price of everything that's happened. But do anybody know the cost that she paid to do it? You could actually hear in the background Tiffany A. Hanyard say preach, preach when she says, look, everybody knows the cost of anything. And then the feds, they act like they're going to save them. But when they don't find anything on our super clean, not corrupt at all, super mayor Tiffany A. Hanyard, are y'all going to apologize to her because she's an angelic figure? Now, I really don't know anybody here personally, and I didn't do no favors to get no job or anything like that. But I come to this job every day and I work hard. And I got a bunch of hardworking employees. And it's sad that the news cameras and the media come into Village Hall and create a hostile work environment mm -hmm. where people ducking and hiding because they don't want to be put on camera about something we have no idea or nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's sad that we have to suffer as the employees here of the village. Mm -hmm. Y'all out of order. Quiet, please. Quiet. Let her finish her and report. As far as the businesses goes that didn't get business license, and how many times were you warned about the garbage and the trash that was never picked up? Garbage and beer bottles everywhere, over everything, every day. Other, other businesses are saying, hey, we don't have any parking spaces for, for our, our patrons to come into our business because what once was a gaming cafe has turned into a full-fledged lounge so right here is where this woman went a little bit too far and by the way yes you can hear tiffany a hanger going uh-huh and all that stuff in the background in order to try to hype her up in order to amp her up 
But right there, she says that the reason why the businesses didn't get business licenses is because they don't clean up the bottles and all the trash around their area. This particular business opened later and all that. But the police officer just said that the reason why they don't have their businesses is due to the fact that they had fights and all this violence and whatnot. So now we're getting multiple explanations for the same phenomenon. All of Tiffany Hanyard's political opponents not getting their business licenses. Unintentional, unforced error right here and amazing to see. And especially since she's going to add another unforced error by giving another completely unrelated reason. And people come here into our town and evidently nobody's read the ordinance because the ordinance says you have to be a resident to be a, a business owner in Dalton. So nobody's read that. Let's get this straight. So these businesses that were operating perfectly fine, some of them got their business license renewed when they initially donated to the super mayor, decided that they no longer supported her because she's raised property taxes. The police are engaged in asset forfeiture. There's all this crazy spending and scandals. And all of a sudden, at the same time that they pull their money away from Henyard or refuse to donate, their license gets suspended. What's the reason why? Well, you ask the police officer and the police officer says, well, there's all this crime around there. They're using the police for their own personal security. Imagine, again, being Tiffany A. Henyard and having your police chief say that the citizens using the police for security services is a problem considering the amount of money she drops on her own personal security. But let's set that aside for a second. And then there's all this other crime and people getting shot up and we just had to shut down the businesses because of the dangerous criminality. Then you got the code enforcement person saying, oh, you're not picking up your trash. There's bottles and all this garbage everywhere and you've been warned about it a bunch of times and you didn't do anything about it and then on top of all of that she says well you actually have to be a resident in Dalton according to this other ordinance in order to own a business so we have three different excuses from two different departments on why these people lost their business licenses why they can't renew them and why the super mayor is fighting tooth and nail in order to prevent them from doing so Seems, seems a little bit suspicious, if you ask me, considering these are also the same two people who worshipped Tiffany Henyard the most in their remarks. It's hard to do a job when everybody's just out to get you for no reason. Targeting. Targeting. I do a great job, but I'm targeted, I guess, because you say I'm the mayor's pick. Well, she did. She got a good pick. She got a great pick, and if all the stuff y'all say I do on top of me doing a great job, then you probably find you a Kim. I just want us to get along for the greater good of the community. And if you guys don't like what the mayor do, at least respect her and give her opportunity to run her term. And like she say, beat her at the pole. That part. She's been fighting an uphill battle since three weeks of being into the office. Mm -hmm. right. An uphill battle. Three weeks of being in the office, you guys did a recall on this lady. What was the recall about? How much did the recall cost? Mm -hmm. And when she inherited this town, I believe mm -hmm. we was in debt $6 million to uh, the city of Chicago for water. A lie. <laughs> for water. Now, now everybody want to say we didn't know the city of Chicago for water? Mm -hmm. It's true. So if we in a $7 million deficit now, how much of that deficit came from the water bill that was carried over from the last mm -hmm. administration? She didn't get this this uh, position without uh, any deficit. So what I also love right here is that now she's blaming the deficit on them getting their water from the city of Chicago. It's a municipal deficit, and that has nothing to do with her. She inherited it from her predecessor. But remember, Tiffany A. Henyard said on Roland Martin, you know, that interview where Roland Martin sucked up to her, worshipped everything she said, and treated her like she was preaching the gospel, that there is no deficit. It's just them refusing to pay bills that that creates this artificial official perception of a deficit you have other trustees who suggested that the city uh, is in a deficit hmm. uh, what is the state of the city's finances so we are in a deficit but it's not what everybody's claiming it to be they're going around uh, with false allegations of five million seven million eight million it's all false our deficit is two million dollars two million dollars two million dollars and uh, what's your annual budget our annual budget is thirty million dollars three million dollars thirty thirty million dollars yep. and so how, how did you, what led to that deficit 
So it comes from them not paying bills. So say, for instance, we have a board meeting and they say, well, we're going to pull this out, pull that out. If they continue to pull bills out later on, what do you have? A deficit, because the bills still do. Just like us not paying our mortgage or not paying our light bill. We still owe the money at the end of the month. When you say they, who's they? Uh, the trustees, the board, because okay. the board is the one that votes to pay the bills. So is there a deficit or isn't there? It doesn't matter because the dictator's propaganda doesn't need to make sense. All you need to know is that the underlings need to obey the dictator. No, I'm not. Not a finance major. I don't specialize in finance, but I generalize enough to read this report. We pay, we pay a finance director to put these numbers together. Mm. They scrub these bills down and put the numbers together, and yes, it's being read. So this is not here where I'm going to be debating on arguing about numbers. The report is being read. The numbers are here to be read. And if there's anything that myself, any trustee need to know, we got a paid finance director, uh, Tanjanique Miller, who we supposed to take our uh, con uh, concerns to. Now, right after this, they go into the village business where somebody is trying to put forward a resolution to get a block of bills paid. But the way that he introduces it completely distances himself from any accountability or responsibility. He says, we hired an outside finance person to put this together. I'm not going to take any questions on it. I don't know what's in it. The professional did it. You got to ask the professional. But by the way, vote right now to pay all this stuff. Well, just to read them into record. Um, I'll ask that we approve the bills as read, removing the following items. Page one, Aurelio's Pizza, $131.63. Page one, Best Western Plus, $318.14. Page one, Chicago Midway Airport, $200 even. <clears throat> Page one, Cooper's Hawk, $557.68. Page two, Dollar Tree, $145.32. Page two, Food for Less, $107.99. Page three, Irie Jerk Hut, $1,356.22. Page three, Italian Fiesta, $113.59. Page three, JJ Fish and Chicken, $68 even. Page three, Johnny T's Bistro and Blues, $90.30. Now they vote to remove a bunch of lavish expenses that are on these particular credit cards. And the reason why is because this is what they did the previous meeting and the meeting before that, because this is all the restaurant bills that they're not getting receipts for. And remember, Tiffany A. Henyard is upset because she says she brings facts and receipts. However, she's trying to pass on these bills again, even though she still has not produced the receipts and the justification for it. So again, not taking account Ability. Now, this spirals into a crazy back and forth because Tiffany A. Henyard knows that under Illinois law, if they don't approve these expenses, which by the way, this is why she keeps bringing them up, then she has to pay for them out of pocket if they're not legitimate expenses. That's how it works. But she's upset because she's like, look, the credit card already cleared, so it's already paid for. But again, this is about whether or not the village is going to authorize reimbursement or whether or not Henyard is going to have to pay it out of pocket. So that's why she's getting so mad. So that's the lies that I be trying to play. It's not a lie as mm -hmm. relates to they say one thing, but Quiet, really the facts is the facts, which we're showing you up here today. <laughs> and Trustee Stan Brown made a great point. If it's an electronic warrant, why are we playing this game? Why are we putting on a show for residents? For real. Let's be 100. We all adults. If it's already paid for, why are we sitting here taking it out on a warrant? It's within the, thor the, the um, authority. It's within the uh, purchasing power. What is the problem? <laughs> But that's what I'm saying, that people are playing politics. tricks. These are the games that we play. We spend about 20, 30 minutes on every bills list, and we're going to go through it. And they're going to take this out, take that out, and you ask why a deficit. When people don't pay bills, the bills still exist, no matter how y'all look at it. So you see who not paying bills, but they blame us. You're looking at it with your own two eyes, residents. Pay attention. Wake up. Stop with the smoke signals like it ain't working. So we got a motion on the floor. You guys want to remove those items, which is well within our authority. But OK, $100 for some food don't make no sense to me. But we will play this game. It's a motion in second. Please I, call I the got a, I got a. Now, this whole thing culminates in this one trustee finally losing it. Finally calling Tiffany A. Hanyard out, finally pointing out that her Tahoe got paid while all this other stuff is past due. Interesting how that works. We have a bill for <laughs> $19,000. $899.60. They are for 122 banners of those trees. <laughs> for everybody just Quiet, saying, please. Now I wonder where these banners are going to go. Somebody tell me. 122 banners, they all can't fit here. So they must going to go up and down the street on Simple. You want to talk about money being spent? 
recklessly, here it is. Pay your bills first, and you can do whatever you want to do as long as it's approved by the board. Get approval first. Stop spending our tax dollars. So it's like it's willy nilly. It's not. And you want taxes to go up. When I came here 17 years ago, $2,300 in property taxes. I am at 69 plus. For what? For what? Stop taking my tax dollars and playing games with them. This is what I'm talking about. And then you want to say it's not true? Here it is, right here. And the email was sent to the public works director. And then adding on top of that, that one of the bills that they keep trying to pass through is $19,000 to put Tiffany Henyard's face all over everywhere. And this is where Tiffany throws a tantrum and tries to drop the subject. And it's absolutely hilarious. Now the audio gets bad here, but it's because Henyard is trying to cut off the microphone. Janice Johnson is the one that issued the check. Y'all so big on throwing each other under the bus. Y'all don't even know what y'all be saying. Janice is the one that issued. So Janice, you're telling me because somebody switched names on there, they stopped the ACH, they didn't stop the ACH on them Tahoes, they didn't stop the ACH on those electric bikes, they didn't stop the a ACH on anything else that's been provided, they didn't stop the ACH or credit card on them $17,000 worth of skates, they didn't stop the ACH or debit card for anything else. So you get here and sit here and say these things and you don't have a clue on what you're talking about, but then we got to go downstairs and probably vote on $40,000 for a lawsuit that you can incur. You don't do that to us. It's not fair. It's not fair at all. And we shouldn't have to come here and keep sitting listening to this crap. Then uh, Tangerine just said the $19,000 the job about to approve is on the warrant list. Of course, that bill is from August. Who the hell want to see Tiffany picture all around town? 122 banners. Ain't nobody going to approve that. And Trusty Brown. Please tell them what those banners say. It ain't even about her picture. Please read off what the banners say. Now, no, Trusty Brown is about to read off what they say. No, we're playing this game. I'll see y'all in another month. Now, look, this whole entire meeting is absolutely chaotic in multiple ways. I didn't even get into the petty, ridiculous, stupid dispute that Henyard got in with the keeper of the records for the village of Dalton because this woman is responsible for the records. Tiffany Henyard keeps asking for the records from her. She says she can have any record that she wants because she's the mayor, but she has to request the specific record. And Tiffany keeps trying to paint her as the villain, lie about her, make it all on her and escape responsibility by saying that she has no access to it when she keeps just giving a general request to see all records. Okay, and then last, uh, clerk, when could we get a copy of all the ordinances, resolutions, uh, intergovernment agreements, all of that stuff? Oh, I really need copies of the intergovernment. Well, I'm, I'm asking, when can we get a copy of all those things? I copies of those too. First of all, you have to be specific. The clerk maintains the records of the village. So if there's something specifically you want, just like attorneys and everyone asks, they don't ask for everything. They ask for specific items. I am not to give you all of my records. I am the keeper of the records, okay? You, you are, you are, and that's not what I'm records. asking. I'm still talking. You Go, go ahead, go ahead. You, Go ahead. Yeah, obviously, that's not how it works. I mean, think about it. Imagine filing a Freedom of Information Act request, and then when you name the subject matter that you're trying to request that information, you just say, the government documents. All, all of the government documents, I want all of them via this Freedom of Information Act request. Obviously, that, that's not something that you're going to be able to do in a logical way. That's not how government operates. But Henyard doesn't play by any rules. She doesn't care. So she's just demanding all of the records. Of the records. I maintain the records of this village. Nobody else. I do. So okay. if you want something specific, you can ask me for it. But you do not get all of my records. And I'm done with this conversation. Okay, clerk. You do know that I'm just giving you, I'm going to educate you again about the law and I educate the public. The, the mayor has the right to review any record in our village at any given time for those that don't know how the rules work. So I'm asking again, the clerk, can I have the records, meaning a copy, you keep the original, I'm not asking for the original. I want a copy of what I'm supposed to check out that you're not allowing me to check out. So are you refusing me the opportunity to come in your office to review all the records, clerk? Are you are you refusing to allow me to do that, Clerky? 
Because we can go. I come down tomorrow at 9 a.m. But I want y'all to see that it's another side to all this. Y'all see the mess, whatever narrative they put out there. But you see that I don't even get things to do my job as it relates to an ordinance or resolution. Something so simple. You can just email it to me in all honesty. And what is obviously a show performance in order to shift blame. Again, provide us with the receipts. Provide us with the RFPs. And let's pay the people that we owe first before continuously mismanaging the money and making bills. We're not paying the lights, but they pay up the first class flights. Make it make sense. Thank you. And that's what this whole entire meeting is. It is Tiffany A. Henyard going out of her way to blame everybody but herself, to paint herself as the victim, to deny reality, to say the media is biased, and to get crazy, ridiculous, over-the-top praise from all of her subordinates that she put into the position, which just shows you how corrupt Dalton actually is. I cannot wait for these investigations to look into her. I cannot wait for them to expose the things that I've seen just by looking at those invoices that I covered in my previous video are insane. The bills that they're not paying are maddening. And again, she keeps being proven wrong time and time again. And everybody's starting to catch on. And the whole village of Dalton is turning against her, which is one of the reasons why she's trying to pivot to a podcaster. But hey, those are just my thoughts on this particular meeting. I want to know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on the social media, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about Tiffany A. Hanyard absolutely losing it at a meeting. Till next time.